Welcome back to Leeds Lately. This video is going to be talking about some of the Leeds United players who are shining on the international stage during this international break. But before we get into that, make sure you do go ahead and hit that big red button down below as it massively helps me out. But like I said, some of Leeds' players have gone international for this break and uh, are playing for their countries and some of them are doing very well actually. So we're going to have a little bit of an update um, so that you can see how they're kind of performing, hopefully bringing that form back into Leeds United. So the first guy we're going to be talking about is Maximilian Verber, of course, playing for Austria against Slovenia in their 1-1 draw yesterday. Um, Maximilian Verber, someone who definitely needs to redeem him, redeem himself. We talked on Joe's podcast about redemption arcs, if you want to go and watch that one, the other day. And we mentioned Max Verber. I think he's got a lot to prove because I don't think he was... He's not done much in a lead shirt since under Jesse Marsh, so that's a long time now. Um, obviously, he went out on loan, but at the moment for the international team, 7.5 rating out of 10, as you'll be able to see on the screen now. Some great statistics there, 92% accurate passes, really dominant centre-back performance. Ground duels won seven, uh, sorry, ground duels seven, won five of them, aerial duels seven won six of them so really good performance from him one successful dribble out of one successful out of one attempt um and he was only dribbled past once so he had a really really good game in that game and uh hopefully his form kind of continues back into the into the leads fold because at the moment you can't see him really getting a game over pascal strack but if he pushes him for his place hopefully it should raise both of their both of their games. Now, the next one that we're going to be talking about is the Wales game. Now, Wales played against Turkey and drew nil-nil, as you can see there. On the subs bench for Wales was, of course, a few familiar faces, um, namely Carl Darlow, who has finally decided that he wants to play for Wales after being called up by Craig Bellamy. Um, obviously, didn't get on the pitch in this game, and neither did Charlie Crew. but it's great for Charlie Crew that he got his first international call-up. Um, when we actually look at the starting 11, we've got a few more familiar faces including Ethan Ampadu and Joe Rodon as well. Of course, Connor Roberts, who was with us last season. Um, but when we actually look at the statistics for these players, Joe Rodon here had a really good game, 7.3 out of 10. Similar game, really, to what Maximilian Verber had. Um, he had 88 out of 94 successful passes, 94% pass accuracy. He's struggled a little bit of late. Joe Rodon. Um, he struggled a little bit of late in a Leeds shirt. So hopefully this is kind of the, the little beginning of his uh, his comeback to form because I think he had a really good game against Turkey. And then, of course, you've got Ethan Ampadu as well, who had um, a decent game. But you always say Ethan Ampadu is a 7 out of 10, at least. Six, well, 6.9 here. So he's very close. So he's maybe just a little bit below his normal level, but accurate passes, 66 out of 74, 89%. Key passes, one, long balls, one, accurate long ball. He did well in this game. He wasn't amazing, but he did well enough to uh, to get Wales a draw in the end. And so Ethan Ampadu hopefully can kind of continue that form back into his uh, back into his Leeds United games. The next one we're going to talk about is one of our new signings, which you'll probably want to hear about, is Al Tanaka, who came on, through, uh, came on for Wataru Endo, the Liverpool midfielder, um, in the 71st minute. And just, he did the same as what he did for Leeds when he came on in that game. 28 out of 30 passes, 93%. Now, when you consider that Joe Rodon and... Maximilian Verber both made about 80 odd passes each so for a centre-back that's in, in a team that's going to play the ball out a lot from the back that's about average for a midfielder you probably maybe get less passes in a game Wataru Endo came off in the 71st minute and Aotanaka came on for the last 19 minutes plus injury time of this game and had 30 passes 28 out of which were successful 33 touches it's just so, and, and actually got into crossing positions as well. It's so um, obvious how much he wants the ball, how much he wants to dictate play, and it's it's really good to see. I can't wait to see more of him in a Leeds United shirt. Here's a little bit more. We've got him highlighted here, uh, the number 17 there, Altanaka. That is his average position. So you can see at the very top of your picture there, just under the goalkeeper, there was moments where he did come and pick the ball back up of the goalkeeper. But actually a lot of the time, 
he was getting forward into the into the final third um, and supplying his teammates with uh, with extra support. Now, obviously, Japan, you can see at the top, Japan won 7-0 against China, which I think is crazy, by the way, how much of a small country Japan is compared to how big China is. And China just do not seem to be able to produce any decent football talent. But Aotanaka, yeah, came forward really helped out with that with that attacking play and uh, yeah it's great to see him going forward and back and being a proper number eight as well so yeah Altenak had a great game uh, for Japan next thing we're going to talk about is um, Mateo Joseph now Mateo Joseph played for the Spanish under 21s versus Scotland in their 2-1 win over the Scots uh, he came on in the 66th minute for Samuel and now I'm going to butcher this on Morodion I think I got that all right. Um, and he scored. Matteo Joseph came and made that front post run. It was a very similar kind of finish to what he did against um, Hull City, actually. He made that front post run, which, if you haven't seen it already, by the way, I've done a video on the channel a couple of days ago talking about why Matteo Joseph could potentially go on to be the top scorer in the championship or at least get a hat full of goals because of the runs and because of how good he is at making runs. That's more detail in that video of how exactly he does that. So go and check that out if you're interested. But again, he made a run across the front post, got in front of the defenders, put the ball in the back of the net and uh, won the game for for um, for Spain. So Mateo Joseph, again, doing really well for the Spanish under-21s. I would imagine this not too long before he's a starting player for the Spanish under 21s and then after that maybe in the Spanish first team which is a real shame because he could have played for England and did in the youth system um, the next we are going to talk about is Ilya Gruev who had a 7.3 rating in his game um, 86 touches loads of uh, accurate passes two key passes as well passes into the final third for people to take shots from so again really good performance from him won two out of his three ground duels, one out of two of his aerial duels, and he had a pretty decent game, was fouled a couple of times. Possession lost 18. I'm not actually sure what this means on Silver Scott. Does that mean that he lost possession 18 times? Because if he did, that is quite quite low. Um, but perhaps that's that comes down to a lot of those passes that he, uh, that he didn't play to a teammate. Either way, Ilya Gruev supposedly had a 7.3 out of 10 games, so a decent game for, for Gruev. And then we go on to the last one, which is Wilfred Nonto. Now, Wilfred Nonto played for the Italy under-21s, who played against the San Marino under-21s, and also, like Altanaka, won 7-0 in that game. Um, he, played, he played half of the game, Wilfred Nonto. He came on, um, sorry, he started the game and then came off at half time. So he played 45 minutes. A couple of shots, one on target, Oh, sorry, two two on target, one off target. Um, what I like about this is, is his attempted dribbles. Now, obviously, it's against San Marino, so a lot of these lads who are on the San Marino team aren't full-time footballers. Probably all of them aren't football full-time footballers. And probably, if they were, they would probably be in San Marino's first team, let's be honest. So, who actually managed to win a game, by the way. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, I don't think I've won a game since 2000 or 2014 or something ridiculous anyway a long time i think it might be 2014 um but wilfred nonto had a good game ground jewels 14 10 one of them so really good from nonto doing his defensive work as well um and nonto had an eight out of ten for the half that he played so he played really well as well so i think it's good to see that all of our um all of our international players are kind of flourishing on that stage it's good to see that we're not sending all of our players out on international duty and we've got a few that are kept back i don't know why i'm so pale in this video i think it's just the way that the sunlight's coming through my window or something i don't know but either way i'm not that pale um anyway uh yeah it's good to see that there's a lot of players who are still back at Leeds united doing the uh, doing the training and stuff and some of the new players as well like ramazani and co will be learning the the Daniel Farker system in that time. The only one that's a bit concerned is Altenaka that is obviously he doesn't know the system and he is out on lot uh, out on lot out on international duty so he might need a little bit more time to get used to things. But when you actually look at his performance in the even in the tiny amount of time he got against Hull City, I think he'll be fine because he was absolutely great and it looks like he's continued that form onto the international stage as well. So, yeah, this is kind of just a little bit of a roundup and an international break round up so that everyone can have a little idea of how well our players are doing um, out on the international break. So thanks for watching Lee's lately and I'll see you in the next one.